Hello, everybody, and welcome to my explanation of Zooniverse. If you weren't in class, hopefully this will help guide you through the first lab. If you were in class, hopefully this will give you a little bit of a refresher. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen now, and we will go to Zooniverse. Uh, hopefully you are seeing, seeing the screen here uh, of Zooniverse. Uh, this is the page that you get when you go to zooniverse.org. So it's not zooniverse.com, it's zooniverse.org. Uh, so go there and if you are brand new, the first thing you'll need to do is register. Notice up here in the right hand corner, it says register. And if you click on that, it will take you to something where you don't have to give it a pass uh, 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 a credit card. You don't have to give it any kind of uh, uh, sensitive information. You just really need your email address and please use your Ivy Tech email address and come up with a username. Uh, if you're under 18 or under 16, sorry, I don't think any of you are, uh, but click that. But don't, don't worry about that for our purposes. Uh, there's nothing really adult on here. They just want to sort of track who's using the site. Uh, so, so make sure you register for that. I'm already registered, so I will sign in. I am Professor Kurt, so I will sign in there. And you'll notice when you do that, you'll come up to something that will tell you on the front page here, your username and how many things you've done to date, observations or classifications. I will use those words interchangeably. So uh, I, I mean the same thing when I'm talking about those. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can personalize it up here under your profile. You can actually personalize it and do some different things that are here. Um, you can also under uh, home page that takes you to this here under settings. You can change your password, customize your profile, put some uh, pictures and stuff up here. Uh, none of that's necessary. You can do all of that on your own. Uh, but on the home page here, uh, which is what when you first log in, you'll see. Notice I've got these color circles here, these or these color arcs on the circle. These are not just decoration. These take me to different projects that I have done, and it tells me how many of the things that I have done in each of them. Six, like uh, uh, 55 here in Galaxy Zoo clumps count, and 225 I think it is uh, there on Muon Hunters, and 361. 381 on uh, Gravity Spy. Click on that and it takes you directly back to the project, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, the thing you do, step number one in the lab is register, sign in. Then the next thing you wanna do is look for the projects that are there. Up here in the upper left, it says projects. So click on that and scroll down a bit. You'll see this bar with has all disciplines. For our class, go to space, because we're all about space here. And you'll notice today it says one out of 19. If you did this earlier in the week, it said 20 or 21. Projects come and go. So look at these. And what I want you to do for step two is click on several of them, like Planet Hunters here, and learn more about what it is. Uh, so, so click on. Uh, what, it, what it's talking about here. What is a transiting exoplanet? Read a little bit about what it is they're measuring. Uh, we'll talk about these kinds of things later in our semester, by the way. So this relates directly to what we're doing. This is using a particular type of telescope array called the Next Generation Transit Survey. And there is a little video that talks a bit about what's going on. So you can see what that project's about. Uh, go back to the list of projects here, and let's go down to, say, Gravity Spy. I do Gravity Spy a lot. Uh, learn more. What they're doing is they are looking for gravity waves. So on the first page of that, help scientists at LIGO, that's pronounced LIGO, their search for gravity waves. And uh, you can learn more here. And it's about the size of a Wikipedia article. You don't, it doesn't get too much into things here. Uh, but then it talks also about the team. There will be a time where I'll ask you who's doing the project. So this is where you'll find that out. 
uh, results, what have they discovered so far, a little bit of extra resources. Again, like at the bottom of a Wikipedia page, you have a bunch of links uh, that would be here. But if I wanted to actually do Gravity Spy, I've done that. It's sort of like a video game. You unlock different levels. On this account, I've gone up to level two. So I would click there. And it's showing me something. It's showing me something here on the screen. What is it showing me? Well, I could go through the tutorial and it'll talk about what's happening here. There's an, actually a longer tutorial for level one, which is where you would start. But essentially what they're doing is they're showing me data that's collected from the LIGO observatories. And I'm supposed to match with what's here. Well, that doesn't look like a power line. That doesn't look like a violin harmonic. That looks kind of sort of like a koi fish. So I will identify that as a koi fish. And that's done. Now that one also looks like a koi fish. So I'll identify and that's done. So there's two. And one of the things you might notice is here it's now telling me, uh, before I go on to next, good work, our experts classified this image. They also thought it was a koi fish. So every now and then you'll get some feedback. If you click on something that's obviously not what it should be, it'll also tell you that too. But don't worry too much about making mistakes because every one of these things is being looked at by a bunch of different people, at least four or five, and sometimes as many as a dozen different people. Now, let's say I look at this one. This one kind of looks like a koi fish that's interrupted in some way. Um, it could be none of the above there. Um, it, cert it almost looks like a blip, but again, it's sort of separated. So it's certainly not a whistle and it's certainly not a power line. So I'm actually going to call it none of the above here. And I can then click done and it'll take me to another one. Now let's say I love this image. I don't love this image, but let's say I love this image here. If I really wanted to keep it, and this is another part of your lab, you can build a collection. Click down here in the four bars at the bottom right of the image. And I already have a Gravity Spy collection set up, so I could add it to my collection. If I did not have one already, I could type in a name, say new collection, and then I could add the collection, and it already adds it to that collection as well. I go back up here to my settings and profile, you'll see collections. And there I have, here's that new collection that I just made, and there's the image that I, I had for it. Now I'm going to delete that because I don't really need that in there. Uh, but that's how you would build collections. Uh, but I, what I want you to do is go through the projects and take a look at at least six of them and tell me what they're about, like Planet 4 here. Help to explore the surface and weather of Mars at the South Pole. Uh, you can see a couple of the images. One of the things you can also see when you look at the main page here, look at this scrolling down a bit, how many volunteers are working on it, how many things they're doing, and see it's 0% complete. There's a lot of data here and no one's really worked on it yet. So this means this one's brand new. They have brand new stuff. About Planet 4, welcome to Planet 4. So this is what you'll look, and I want you to give me two or three sentences, just a very brief thing about what this is and what five or so other it, uh, projects are. I want you to tell me what six of them are. So you know what Gravity Spy is now. You know what Planet 4 is now. AR, I, the, the, if I could speak. AI for Mars also is talking about the Martian terrain, but that one's specifically guided towards rovers. So it will teach the rovers how to avoid rocks, how to avoid pitfalls, how to avoid falling into craters and stuff like that. Uh, some of them, like this one here, Star Notes, this one is important to me because it helps to transcribe the work of women astronomers. Women have been overlooked in astronomy for a very long time. This project looks at a couple of different people over time. Again, scroll down, notice we're about 49% complete. We're about halfway there. And in this one, you won't look at gravity wave data. You won't look at uh, uh, rocks and terrain and other things. What you're doing is you're looking at notebooks that astronomers, women astronomers in the past have put together. 
And what you'll be doing when you're when you're looking at this here, uh, let's go back to uh, let's cho choose an astronomer and get started here. It will tell you what you need to do. Welcome, thank you for helping us transcribe the notebooks. And these are specifically from a group of women who are called the Harvard Computers or the Harvard Calculators. And it's telling you use Google Chrome or Firefox. Those are the, the best ones to use on this. And here are some of the tools that it will tell you about. We have these different uh, bits and pieces here. So one of the things it's help, hoping you will do is go through and find what are called plate numbers. So we'll look for plate numbers, and then you'll do a little sort of rectangle around it. Uh, so are there any plate numbers visible? Yes, I've got a plate number up here. Uh, so go next. And now I can draw a box around that plate number. And I can say that plate number is 84. OK. And now I'm done with it. And now it takes me to something else. And you can take a look at what's happening on the page. Uh, sometimes it will make sense to you. Sometimes it won't. But believe it or not, simply by going through and saying yes, and then highlighting that, and saying it says it's 93, you are helping this research project. You are helping these people to be able to classify these and put them together in a way that can be used by other people. And the more people who help with this, it's a very simple thing, as you can see. Uh, so, so you won't want to spend lots and lots and lots of effort, lots of time to do it. But and, and after a while, it may get a little monotonous, which is why I have you do more than one project. See, that one is 200. So we'll do that there. When I'm done, say, OK, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I have to go feed my fish or, or walk the dog or whatever. You just go back up to projects and it's done. It, it will never get to like, this is the last one. So you just decide, OK, I'm stopping. I'm done. Now, if I go back to my home here, uh, notice the number of classifications I've made has gone up. That's a higher number than it was before, because it's including the ones that I just did. Uh, so I don't need you to do lots and lots and lots of things. I just want you to get sort of used to things now. Uh, so look for your six projects, write a little bit about each of the six, then choose two of those and start doing what I just did. Start doing two of those with Gravity Spy or uh, Star Notes or AI for Mars or LIGO or any, any of the ones that you, you uh, find interesting. And don't worry if you pick ones that you decide later you're not interested in, you'll be given a chance to, tr to change, to change them around. So your assignment this time, register, that's number one. Look at six of them and tell me a little bit about them, just a couple sentences, no more. Pick two of those six and start doing what I just did, classifications or identifications, and do a 15 to 20 on each one. So you see, it doesn't take a long time to get up to 20 on any of those. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes very fast. You can go through it rapidly. And you'll see the circle around here growing, uh, with different colors from the different projects that you're doing. And then you'll also want to, as you're doing those things, keep a collection. So as you're going through, say you, if you do the gravity spy and you like those koi fish, you can save the koi fish. If you go through uh, like gravity, gravity uh, 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 galaxy clump, galaxy zoo. Here, let me show you this one here. We'll get started. Um, this one, you're looking at galaxies, and it again, look through the tutorial. It'll tell you how you can do things. One of the things this one says also, notice it says, your answer may not always be obvious. Just take your best guess. Again, don't stress over it. Don't stress over it. But we're looking at this. It's sort of like an edge on, and it looks kind of like that one there, features or disk, because we've got a little bulge. And so I'll pick that one there. We're looking at it edge on, yes, and it has a little bulge again, so we'll pick that one there. Is it rounded? Is it boxy? No bulge. Well, it's rounded with a bulge. It's not boxy and it's not the no bulge, so I'll pick that one there. Does it look like it's being like tugged or pulled or is it pretty even throughout? Well, it's pretty even, so there are no major disturbances there. And they only want you to pay attention to the central one on this one. 
So do we see any of these rare features? Well, no, nothing's overlapping. There are no dust lanes. There's nothing irregular about it. Uh, there's no lens arc or anything like that. Although here's the trick. This little thing, notice it's got a little edge there around the circle. That could be a lens arc. But I'm not going to say yes, because it actually looks like a different kind of galaxy, uh, not, not a lensing. Uh, so I'm going to say nothing unusual about that and click done. And there I go. So um, if, if I, I saw this one, again, this one looks, again, smooth. Um, looks like it's not completely round, but close. Uh, doesn't look like it's being disturbed by anything. Doesn't look like it's got much going on. So, but let's say I like this one a lot. Again, I can put it in my Galaxy Zoo collection and add that. Do that before you click done on anything, because when you click done, it'll take you to another. So that's what you do when you write up your stuff, write it into like a, just a regular Word document, a regular document of some sort, and uh, save it as a doc or docx or PDF file. If you're using Google Docs, you can save it as something. Don't just save, but save as, and it will give you the chance to save it as a PDF. So it, the, the Canvas will not take just a regular Google Docs. It will not take a dot .pages thing, for example. So it has to be dot .doc or doc .docx or dot .pdf. So, and you can save it in Google Docs as a dot .pdf uh, so that you could turn it in. Uh, so then you'll, so I, I, what you can do is you can take a screenshot of your collections or you can cut and paste your collections. Uh, so, so like here with my Galaxy Zoo, I've collected these different images over time uh, because I thought they looked rather neat. This one is taking a while to resolve. Uh, it's pretty neat too, but I love the way th this one is uh, sort of elongated. This one you can see. Uh, close up, you can see actually the, the arms inside the swirl. Uh, so I could actually save this image or copy this image and then paste it into my Word document or my Google Docs document. Uh, so, so that's how you would tell me what your collections are doing. Uh, I do expect images in your first lab uh, so that I can see what you're seeing because I've done most of these projects in one way or another, but I wanna see what you're seeing because you're going to see different elements. You're going to see different items along the way. Not all koi fish look alike. Not all galaxies look alike. Not all terrains on Mars look alike. So I want to see what you're seeing. And uh, I, so, so refer back to this if you have any questions. Uh, refer back to the uh, instruction sheet. It does go step by step by step by step. So it, there's, there should be nothing confusing there and uh, turn it in in the canvas area or print it out and turn it in hard copy to me uh, in, in class. Uh, also, just feel free to contact me, email me if you have any questions. And I think that's it for lab one of Zuniverse. So good luck and I will look forward to your results. This is real science, by the way. This is not just a simulation. This is not just something you do on the computer. These are actual projects with actual scientists and researchers and graduate students and others who are behind this, who are counting on you and counting on all of us who are involved in this to help understand what's going on in the universe. So here you are already making a difference.